In other videos, we talk about the concept of value rank and how to work with it. In this video, we talk about detailed value ranks. What is a value rank? A value rank relates the price of a company that you pay for it to its size. And we can measure the size of a company in different ways. One way of measuring size is basically you look at the revenues that the company has. The more revenues, the bigger. Then, of course, if a company sells products, they want to make a profit. So you can look at the profit. The more profit, the bigger the company. Then, in order to produce all these products, companies have invested capital. Machines and newer companies have brands. This is called invested capital and is on the balance sheet. And now, because they want to make you happy as an investor, companies pay dividends. These are the four things where we measure the size of a company. And now we, we relate this to price. This is done like this. If you compare the revenue to, to the price of the stock, it's called the price sales ratio, price sales ratio. Now, if a company has a market value which is double the size of the revenue it has, it has a price sales ratio of two. It's a multiple. What we then do is we calculate this price sales ratio for the company and for all comparable other companies. And then we turn that into a rank. The company with the highest price sales ratio is the most expensive company and gets the lowest price sales rank. And the company that is the cheapest compared to its size gets the highest price sales rank at Obermott. We do the same thing for invested capital. Professionals call this market to book value. It's another multiple. And we do the same thing. We compare the market to book value of that company we want to analyze to all other companies and calculate the rank of that company. If a company has an average market to book value compared to all the others, it gets a rank of 50. Then we look at profits. Profits are actually really important. This ratio is called price earnings and it's one of the most famous multiples used for stock investing. Again, we do the same thing. We calculate price earnings for the stock and for all other investment opportunities and calculate the rank. And finally, we take the dividend, the dividends, and relate the dividends to the size of a company. A company that pays a high dividend compared to its market value gets a high Obermott value rank. And companies that pay low dividends compared to the market value of the company get low dividend uh, ranks. This is called the dividend yield by professionals. Now we're not finished yet. You don't see any of these ranks on the Obermott top 10 lists. On the Obermott top 10 list, you see a consolidated rank that takes account of all these ranks. We arrive at the consolidated rank by calculating the average of all these ranks. And then we do the same thing again. We, called, we, call, we calculate averages for all other companies. And the company with the lowest average gets a consolidated value rank of 1. And the one with the highest average gets a consolidated value rank of 100. So how do you work with those detailed value ranks? I have to give you some basics in finance here, but it's not that complicated. If you look at revenues and invested capital, these ratios fluctuate a lot less than others. They're very stable and therefore very reliable to value a company. However, sometimes they are a little misleading. For instance, when you take revenues, some companies decide to produce everything themselves, and other companies that are comparable may decide 
to buy products and resell them. They decide to trade. So a company that is more in the trading business than in the production business, even though they're in the same business, has a lot higher revenues than one that decides to produce everything themselves. Also in invested capital, we have problems. First, some companies are very aggressive in how they value their assets. Their assets are bigger than in another company where they are very conservative with their assets and say they're not worth that much. So there may be an issue in comparing companies that are more aggressive with those that are less aggressive. And in addition, nowadays, newer companies tend to have a lot of intellectual property. Look at Google or Facebook. Their assets are not really their machines and computers and networks. Their assets are their brand and the fact that everybody uses them. And this is not reflected in your invested capital. Now we come to the more important ratios, the profit and the dividends. These are actually your most important ratios because at the end of the day, you're buying a company because it makes a profit and pays you a dividend. However, these ratios fluctuate a lot and that makes them less reliable. Let's look at a couple of examples to give you a head start using these detailed ranks. The first case I would like to discuss with you is the crisis case. Every company from time to time goes through a difficult phase. What happens is profits drop and also their reputation. The crisis is typically known. That means their market value drops too. But sales and invested capital are typically not that much affected right away. That means their value ranks in terms of sales and invested capital increase. However, their value rank for profits is, profit is very, very low. Coca-Cola was in such a situation in the 1980s when they introduced the new formula. And suddenly everybody thought Coca-Cola is crazy, didn't drink Coke anymore, and their profits dropped dramatically. However, compared to their size in terms of sales and invested capital, Coca-Cola must have been really cheap because everybody knew about their problems. That was when Warren Buffett came in and bought the company. And he profited because at the end of the day, profits go back to normal. Now Coca-Cola today is in the reverse situation. I call this the cash cow case. Today, Coca-Cola is really expensive compared to its revenues and compared to its invested capital. Even compared to its profit, it's expensive. Only compared to its dividends, it's not that expensive. This means Coca-Cola today pays out a lot of their cash in the form of dividends to shareholders, naturally to support their share price. Now that makes me a little suspicious. I think if Coca-Cola doesn't know what to do with their profit and pays it all out to shareholders, I should be worried. And if you find, if you find the reverse case, let's call that the future star case, you should, could actually be very happy. If you find a company with really good profits but very low dividend payouts, it means that management knows what to do with the money and it could be a good sign to invest. The last case, I call it the balance case, is the one I like most. This is when all four value ranks are in the same direction. They all look good and I feel comfortable investing. You see, the value ranks only reflect the facts and you have to interpret them. This is why you should look at the other videos where, ex where we explain the value rank concept in more detail and give you even more examples than what you just heard right now.